there any such thing as perfect technique? It's a question as old as civilization is, but watching Rahul Dravid bat can make it almost redundant. What does the perfect technician care about playing conditions, home or abroad, spinning tracks and seeming tracks? Not much. This is what makes Dravid Indian cricket's Mr. Dependable. Short and it's gone again. Adding steel to the artistic Indian middle order. One day century for Rahul Dravid. You come across someone who's very studious, uh, who's very, very serious about his cricket and who's always keen to... Uh, learn and improve. If you had to put or had to bet on somebody to play for your life, that would be Rahul Dravid. Born into a middle class family with humble aspirations, Dravid's love for sport was built in very early. By the time he was 12, he had already been spotted as a cricketer with immense potential. I think right from the time I can remember, I've always held a bat or ball in my hand. Uh, you know, so it was always going to be cricket for me. Dravid modelled himself after no less a man than Sunil Gavaskar. In his time, Gavaskar's defence was unbreachable. His batting the nearest to perfection it could get. You know, you sort of admired people like Gavaskar and you know Vishwanath. Uh, but I never made a conscious effort. But I think the fact that my coach stressed a lot on the basics initially growing up, uh, you know, sort of made a big impact in, uh, on, on my game. Dravid used these qualities to pile on massive scores in the domestic circuit. For five years, he consistently put the runs on the board till a call-up to the national side was inevitable. That's going to be a hundred. I think Rahul was outstanding. I mean, the way he batted, um, the way he concentrated, his preparation. I think his solid defense uh, was something which you can feel that, okay, this guy is ready for the next level. But at that point in time, I felt that he belongs to the uh, big man's world. Lords 1996, Dravid's first step in the big man's world. It was only apt that a man in the classical mold make his debut at cricket's most hallowed turf. Fellow debutant Saurav Ganguly hit an unforgettable century. Dravid was unlucky to miss it by just five runs. Firstly, it was a great honor and a privilege to play for your country. It was a dream come true to, for me to, you know, walk in with a, uh, you know, with an Indian team and with an Indian cap, uh, and and then to get 95 runs in that game, uh, you know, I would have taken that. Uh, sure, it would have been nice to get a five more, but you know, I came back from the tour with a lot of self-belief and confidence in, in my ability to play at the international level, and uh, so the runs really didn't matter. It was the perfect launching pad for the young, intense boy from Bangalore. With his rock-solid defence, his unflappable patience for the long grind and his drive to succeed in tough conditions, India had an answer to their overseas struggles. He negotiates the moving ball, the fast ball, uh, much better than most of the players. He reads the line and the length perfectly and, uh, and the way he leaves the ball which are not required to be played. Dravid's stress on technique and patience was an incomparable virtue in white. But it was a double-edged sword when it turned out to play the shorter, faster version of the game. There was a tough phase um, when Rahul wasn't doing well uh, in, in one-day cricket and then he was dropped and he made a, made a comeback. I think that's the phase uh, when he had a real look at his, um, at his batting in one-day cricket. Another man of such immense talent and skill as Rahul Dravid can't stay down for too long. When he was ready, he was ready to be the best. In the 1999 World Cup, a new Rahul Dravid took the field. He could drive the ball with perfect elegance, pull it with disdain and didn't hesitate to loft bowlers all over the park. He finished as the tournament's highest run getter. If you look at pure stroke making ability, a stroke or hitting the ball ability. You know, I wasn't the most talented or I'm not the most gifted player in that sense. But, you know, I've made my game work for me over a period of time. You know, I've succeeded over a period of time and I think I've maximized my talents to a large extent. But the change to the new millennium was rife with scandals and defeats for Indian cricket. Hurt and confused by the match-fixing saga that tore the game apart, it was time for introspection. It was quite ugly. I mean, uh, that period was probably the most difficult period um, of uh, my cricket, uh, or probably anybody's cricket. Um, there was a bit of uh, loss of faith uh, in the people. 
Dravid left the storm behind to work on his game in the English county season. When he returned, it was with a new awareness of his role in Indian cricket. You know, I went and stayed alone for six months, uh, went away from home and uh, just enjoyed the thing of being in another dressing room, another atmosphere, came back very refreshed and keen to look at the uh, you know, at international cricket with totally different light and uh, I think that was a, a critical phase for me, a critical time for me, the, the stint in county cricket which uh, helped me sort of open my eyes to a lot more things than I, I was used to. Team India was ready to build on the ruins. Saurabh Ganguly was given the reins of a fresh team and Dravid was to be his trusted lieutenant. It was for them now to show a new way. Absolutely, Bishak. What a terrific performance by India. Rahul Dravid, a very sensible knock from him. They've won this one in great style. There's absolutely no 2001. The invincible Aussies were giving a new and confident Indian team reason to feel old and worn out. 16 test wins in a row and the Aussies were hungry for more. India had been shot down in ruthless fashion in the first test. In the second test in Kolkata, India were again staring down the barrel. He's cleaned him up here. When Rahul Dravid walked out to join Vivius Lakshman at the crease, they still needed 42 runs to avoid an innings defeat. This time he pulls and, it and then history happened. That's Dravid and Lakshman batted like modern day gladiators. They batted till the self doubt was gone. The demons were slayed and the Aussie onslaught halted. Dravid scored 180 runs, an effort eclipsed only by Lakshman's record-breaking innings at the other end. It really has been a masterpiece from BBS Lakshman. Calcutta was special because when we beat Australia after following on, I think that was something that, you know, is, is, you don't do that very often. Not many teams, you know, follow on and then go on to win a test match and then win a series from there. I think that was uh, that was the point where it really switched for him. I mean, that's the that's the first and the last time we'll see him gesticulating so uh, so, so sort of vehemently towards uh, the press box. I think that was the innings where he actually finally sort of relaxed and he said, you know, he was able to in the company of Lakshman, who was just a very who plays at a very different pace to him. Uh, he was able to sort of almost cross that mental barrier. India have won the test match. Team India was soaring to new heights from Kolkata to Headingley, Adelaide to Rawalpindi, Jamaica to Perth, Dravid's bat was scripting glowing new chapters in the history of Indian cricket. At one point during this incredible run, Dravid slammed four centuries in successive innings. Even more stunning, four double hundreds in the space of just 15 tests, each of them resulting in historic away wins. Well played. He was the backbone basically around which the entire body is formed and I think he was the backbone around which all the others could uh, exhibit their their artistry and greatness. long term mein soch ke chalte hain ki short term mein wo soch wo ye soch ke chalte hain ki theek hai okay abhi main batting karne gaya hu lekin agar main end of the day not out honga to meri team ko kya fayda hoga. Like a perfect diamond each innings by Dravid had a different facet. Hitting Lee was all about technical perfection a master class on a nightmarish pitch for visiting teams. It was a very grey and cloudy day. It was not a day that most captains would have chosen to bat first. I remember he took a lot of balls in his body because it was kind of nipping around and sometimes bouncing. And it did not matter to him. He would just, he would like let it come on to him, let it hit him. It didn't matter. He was there for 148 runs. It's well played. It's Adelaide was a supreme example of not wilting under pressure. India had lost early wickets, chasing a massive Aussie score. David provided the fortification once again, taking India to an incredible win. In that series, his average was a staggering 123. In a situation where we were uh, to actually uh, get the, get very close to the Australian total, I think it was it was basically due to Rahul's uh, uh, phenomenal innings. We sort of broke that myth that that in the sort of invincible Australian team in Australia, you know, they were beaten in Australia after a very long time. Oh, magnificent! Rahul Pindi was all about the art of war, a blistering attack to score an epic 270. This golden period wouldn't have been possible without uh, his contribution, that goes without saying. If he had not made those runs, he wouldn't have had this golden period at all. In Dravid, the old and the new blended seamlessly. That's Substance and style walked hand in hand. The anchor man at number three was the best ever for India in that crucial position. And 
he was the only Indian batsman with a better record outside the country. We always wanted to try and do well abroad. I mean, that was one of the you know things that people always growing up. When I first started cricket, a lot of former players. A lot of the players in my own team said that you know you'll really be judged by what you do abroad, and I think that somewhere that stayed with me. In one-day matches, Ravid was radically adapting. With India struggling to find a good wicketkeeper batsman, Saurav Ganguly handed him the arduous job of staying behind the wickets. He was coming down the order too, completing crucial wins for India. Once he started keeping the wickets. Then he knew that you know if he doesn't score too many runs, he's there as a keeper as well because I think he did a good job. So I think it made a lot of difference to his career. And yes, as you said, it gave a lot of balance to the Indian team as well. The equation looked oh, simple. Now. If Dravid scored, India were guaranteed a win, and, and he was difficult to get out. It was the perfect combination. And again. If you if you look at the records, if you see Saurav has 21 Test victories, and if you see Rahul Dravid's average in those matches, I think it's about 100. Uh, he was the most influential uh, player in Saurav's team. But the cool, collected, and ordered world that Dravid had built around him, a world defined by the reach of his bat, was about to explode. Controversy was brewing and a new role was in the horizon. Times of change are seldom peaceful. For Team India, it was nothing less than a violent upheaval. The chapel Saurav Saga exploded like a landmine and when Saurav Ganguly was sacked as Team India's captain, Dravid was the natural choice to fill his shoes. Dravid wanted the captaincy as well and he was a good man for it. He's a solid player, he led by example. In the first uh, six to eight months that he led the team, he also uh, raised his performances uh, even more. Dravid had a dream start to his captaincy, winning an ODI series in Sri Lanka, a historic test series in West Indies, the first time in 35 years. Victory to Raul Dravid and a series victory to India. But behind the scenes, things were different. Stories of a divided dressing room, leaks from the team management, more public spats. Chapel's Team India looked like an unhappy and resentful side and showed on the field. India suffered a shocking exit at the 2007 World Cup. Rahul Dravid could hardly bear to watch. Somehow the team sort of fell apart under him. He could not hold it together. And I think a lot of this was uh, due to his approach as captain and not just his but Greg Chappell's. I think Chappell was the more dominant figure. Dravid made a comeback as captain, winning yet another historic away series, beating England at home for the first time in 21 years. But he was struggling to keep the balance between his batting and captaincy and the rifts inside Team India were growing deeper. Dravid the batsman thrived in adversity but Dravid the captain wilted under pressure and resigned. The chapel should have uh, helped him, uh, uh, you know, work better with the team rather than, you know, the, the, the way that it turned out. I mean, chapel was just a bad manager of men. He, we all know the stories about um, what, you know, the things that he said about players and so on. It's not easy to give up captaincy. The very fact that he did give up captaincy goes to just show the man uh, didn't want to do something against his own uh, wishes or, or something he wasn't enjoying. After a decade of untiring contributions, Dravid's bat too had suddenly stopped talking. He looked like he had become a slave to his technique. And as the failures piled up, Dravid looked helpless and haunted on the field. He was dropped from the one day side and holding on to his test place with the thinnest of threads. Whenever he was pushed in a corner, he never liked it. Whether it was a controversy regarding Rick Chappell or whether it is with Saurav Ganguly or whether it is with the selectors. And because of, of that kind of feeling, his, his, his batting was affected, was, um, was deeply affected. Just when everyone thought that they had seen the last brick on the wall, Dravid fought his demons to score a match-winning 93 at Perth for an incredible win against Australia. Just whack it. Very popular, how you, in that
in the dressing room. But his nightmare with the bat continued. Though the Indian selectors gave him a long rope, the cries to drop him grew louder and louder. He gets out again to the most unlikely. In December 2008, Dravid silenced his critics yet again, compiling a patient 136 against England at Mohali to put a nightmare year behind. I would want to see him, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, living on a high note. What will the new year hold for one of India's greatest batsmen? A committed team man, a keen student of the game and a master of his craft. No matter how his career ends, the numbers will always speak the cold truth about the cool technician. Without Rahul Dravid, India's rise in world cricket would have been impossible.